Okay, so uh, Revit Live, all right, so uh, here's where I'm gonna take you. We'll talk a little bit about it. I'll show you just briefly what it is. Um, and then, uh, but you'll be going, hey, I didn't see enough of it, but we'll definitely come back to it. Um, I'm gonna show you the full process of how you take your Revit model up into the cloud, get it produced into something that we can use with the free viewer. Okay, so I, we can do that as well. But then I'll go in, it's not real complicated, right? So some of the stuff like Revit, for example, is pretty deep, right? Some of my classes are like five days long just for in, uh, essentials, for example. Um, this, in that amount of time, you're gonna see every button. <laughs> okay, all right, so when you get back to the office and you decide you wanna load the free viewer and some of those sample files, which I'm gonna remind you at the end of the presentation to do, um, five minutes to download it, install it, and you're running around just like me and you'll know what buttons are what, okay? Check it out, right? See if you wanna do it yourself, okay? So um, for starters, right now-ish, the name is Revit Live, okay? It was called Autodesk Live, now it's sorta of called Autodesk Revit Live, and it's somewhere in between. So like if you're going up on the, on the web, even the Autodesk site, you'll see Autodesk Live and Revit Live. The thing is, it's made for us. It's just for Revit, okay? It's not inventor models being pushed up and that sort of thing. It's, for, it's, it's Revit, okay? So uh, I think they just decided maybe they better change the name so that it's more uh, ringing home so we understand what it's about, okay? Okay, now we know this one. This is at the heart of it. Autodesk Revit, right? So powerhouse for design and construction, documentation, so on and so forth. Right, you guys live this one uh, back at the office. Uh, here's Revit Live, an interactive storytelling engine. Okay, it's immersive. You walk around, you're driving around inside of your model, okay? Just like a game, okay? Makes it interactive in just a click. You know, you just left click, left clicking as you're going. Um, you can customize the navigation points so you can save views. It's kind of like your camera views in Revit, right? I'll show you some of that. So we can jump around from place to place within your building or your project. The lighting that you de um, determine as in your location, back in the Revit model, it will be the lighting in uh, the design model of uh, Revit Live as well. So if you decide you want to change the time of day, um, it's all shifting around based on your location in you know, um, Kent, right? Kent, Washington or something like that, okay? If you don't set it, it'll, It'll still work anyway. It'll just kind of randomly choose where it'd be a good place for the sun to be, okay? Um, the idea is to present it to clients, right? And or explore it yourself. Let them explore it. Uh, there's a free viewer. And so there's three parts to it. There's Revit, the, the Autodesk Live Editor, and then the Autodesk Live, Revit Live Viewer, okay? So um, you know all about the Revit piece, and uh, I'll show you what the add-in looks like there, okay? So here's what it looks like um, diagrammatically, anyway. Uh, you start with Revit, and if you look at my diagram in the upper right corner, um, if you have uh, Live, which is part of the AEC collection now, so probably a good share of you have it, you can get it outside of that if you if you don't have it, but it's, they've included it now in the AEC collection. So it used to be building design suite, now they're renting software basically, that's a collection. And you'll see uh, Live is included in that. That has the editor and then of course the viewer is already free anyway. And if Big Brother, you know, this kind of single sign-in sort of a thing, recognizes who you are and you take your Revit model and push it up into the cloud, uh, it'll process it and then it'll send the model back down to you in a format that you can use with the editor. So then you use the live editor on it, massage it a little bit, like maybe, eh, I don't really want the owner to see that uh, view. And, you know, it's of a mechanical room or something that was good for me, but not for everybody else. And so you can take those and reorder them and rename them and things like that for the views. And then you say, now I'm gonna process it in something that's a deliverable for the free viewer. Okay, so that's the steps that we'll go through. The editor and the viewer look very similar. There's some extra buttons in the editor that the viewer doesn't have, but like I'll go back and forth between the two of them so you can take a look at the buttons around the outside edge. 
Um, they both have the ability to, of the top left here. You walk through a presentation, just like a game, explore the interior and exterior of your building, change the sun's position, query objects to see their BIM information. Now this is kind of a, of a nebulous sounding statement, but the properties of my Revit objects, components, the wall, the windows, that sort of thing, you click on it and you see the property palette basically of Revit show up in here. Uh, so it's more than just looking around in the building, it's about actually getting at the components there. Um, and then you can jump around from view to view. In, in Revit, we'll do like camera view, you know, 3D view one, 3D view two, where we're jumping around. Um, we have our own what's called points of view in there that you can jump around as well. Now on the flip side, the editor has some additional capabilities. So um, that's the one that processes the Revit files for use in, in the cloud, right? Um, you can take the points of view and you can delete them, rename them, reorder them. Uh, for what you want them to see when they're using, well, or yourself too, when you log back in the next day, but also when you're producing for the uh, free viewer, uh, you can um, massage those. Um, you can set a home view, that's where it's gonna start with in the first place, and a rendering style as well. So I'll show you that. You can either have, you know, where brick looks like brick, or you can take away all of the materials and make everything white. Um, or a kind of shade of gray if you want to with the ground plane as well. And then uh, finally, you know, it's uh, most you know, important button or one of the important buttons in there is to be able to publish for the free viewer so that uh, anybody can use it uh, via a desktop, which I'll be showing you today, an iPad or virtual reality. Okay, so let me just, uh, let me flip over here once to, um, if I can find the viewer. Okay, so here's the live viewer, all right. So here I am after publishing a model. Um, you'll see some buttons in the upper uh, left corner up here in the editor that they're not here in the viewer. Um, and I'm seeing the model plus the trees, you can see that Instantly, they start to animate, like you're seeing there. Do you see the leaves blowing around? And a cursor is on the ground here as I move my cursor around. And if I click on the ground, um, it takes off and starts walking, you know? So basically, I'm just moving the cursor around, and then I left-click to make it go, right? So if I decide I want to get up here a little closer, left-click walk up to that point. You can change the speed on this, too. You're also seeing, we'll take another look at this a little later, but um, the entourage that you load in out of the Autodesk generic library, um, you can make them silhouette is the way that they come in and you can change, um, you can change the um, uh, color from white to opaque to transparent. Um, if uh, I left click and hold and move my cursor around, um, I can say, you know what, I'd like to, here, let me get up here, for example. Up here a little closer. Say I want to go up to that doorway right here. Passes right through the doors, the doors open up, I walk up the stairs, and go into a closet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just that easy, all right. So anyway, that's just kind of a glimpse of the viewer here a little bit, all right, so you can kind of get a sense for this. Okay, I'm gonna close out of this one. Okay, and it takes me back to any, any models that I have um, I'd already fired up here. Let me get that, get that button going there. There we go, closing scene. Okay, now let me show you the workflow. Now the workflow, um, actually, if I were to do it live for you, it might take closer to, for a decent sized model, it might take 25 minutes or something. So what I did was I recorded it and then I cut out some of the white space so that we're not all just sitting here you know, twiddling our thumbs, all right? So um, let me play that for you here, and I'll, I'll show you where the um, parts are that I've, I've cut out so that you can get a sense for it. So this will be about six minutes here. Okay, so here's our Revit model. And with the different views, now the 3D views, one, one two, three, um, and that 3D view, all of those will become points of view once I publish the model. 
There's a go live button. If there's any problems with the model or something that it considers to be a problem going forward, it's saying, you know, you might want to consider doing this, this, and this to it. Okay, and I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. Um, upload goes pretty fast. It depends on your speed of your um, upload capabilities. It's just uploading, just like downloading, you know. Um, uh, when I tried this from my home, it took forever, for example. In our office, it was, you know, three minutes, four minutes, maybe, something like that. Um, once it gets um, up where the whole model has been uploaded, it goes into a waiting state, and it'll tell me what number I am in the queue. Um, every single time, I have been number one, which I know they got a lot of servers on working on this. Um, with all you out there, I still plan on being number one. Just keep that in mind, okay? The preparing, though, that's the part that really takes quite a while because they're crunching on this. They're making the trees animate. They're making the doors animate. They're replacing all of those. Um, so preparing, you can go about your business, though. You don't have to um, you know, sit around. And then, then the downloading happens fast when it comes back down. Um, from there, okay, so now here's the editor, which I'll show you in Minutia. Um, I can either um, browse to it with the select file button or I can drag and drop from the download location into the blue box off to the side and just release. It creates a new thumbnail. The very first time I do this after it's unpacked, it'll show up kind of grayed out because um, I've never opened it up. This is one that I sent up and then I brought it back down again, made some tweaks to it, sent it up again as the design was developing. And then um, so... The unpacking doesn't take actually too long. It's kind of what we used to call Microsoft time, where it goes 9%, 10%, 58, 62, 99, 100. <laughs> okay, something like that. But anyway, uh, you know, so there's the architecture one that I sent up. So um, with the new tweaks that I had done. So um, I go to launch that now. And now I'm still in the live editor at that step, right? And it recognized who I was. That's why I was able to upload it. And um, now I can start to navigate it. You know, for example, I'll show you the, the sun button where I can say, you know, I want it to be different times a day. And the sun will change based on that. This is not just a, a um, photo, you know, or a JPEG. Um, this is my model that I can walk around in. Um, there's the saved viewpoints off to the side and in the editor. Um, I can reorder those, and there's that little red X off to the right side where I can delete ones that I don't want to be seen as the, um, by the people using this in the future. And um, they will allow me to jump from place to place. So if I click on one of them, it zaps me over to the new area. It doesn't just, you know, rematerialize. It pans you over so you can kind of get a sense for where you're heading to there. Okay, so um, once I get all of those tweaked, now the, these buttons in the upper left corner are the publishing buttons, so they, you're not going to see those in the viewer. Earlier I just clicked and I was done. So this is now making a different file format, an, a .live file, um, which is the one that the um, iPad and the desktop are looking for um, for their use. So, um, and this one doesn't require cloud access. You don't need internet access at all. This is happening um, right from the power of your own machine here. Okay. Once that do is done then, um, I can continue to work in the editor if I so desire. But um, now that I've made one for the viewer, I can turn around and go to the viewer and try it out there. So um, the viewer's welcome screen looked kind of similar to the welcome screen that we saw with the um, editor. Here it's looking for LVMD files. Those are the editor file format. I'm going to go over to where the .live files were made, the one that I just made, and drag and drop that, or you can browse to it as well. And now I'm over in the viewer. Now for the iPad, um, I would take that file and I'd push it up to like A360 and then give them um, access to it and say, use your iPad and go to it there instead. <laughs> and here they are using it in the viewer for the first time. And it looks something like this uh, once I published it. If this is what I chose for my home view, now I can orbit, I can zoom pan, um, 
drop down in, get information on the objects in it. And I'll explain the terrain here around this. Um, I went by kind of fast there earlier, but I can extend a topo surface to, um, to the outside boundaries like you're seeing there. Okay. All right, there we are jumping around. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and get out of this now. Here once, and, and um, let, me show you, uh, let me show you what this looks like in Revit, okay? So um, here I am in the Revit screen, and I want to uh, start this process. I won't do the whole, yes, sir? Yeah, to, to the editor format. That's the only cloud one. Yep. Yep, yep. So it'll be in that LVMD format or something like that. So you could actually just share that with other people um, in your office that also have the editor, because if they got the collection, you know, without even going to the um, live uh, free viewer format. But, um, uh, you know, once you get it in that format, is actually pretty, that one's pretty fast, too, for preparing it for that, so, okay. Yep, but that's the only cloud access, and that's the only licensing thing that we actually got to look at, too, for that matter, you know. So, um, the uh, Go Live button these days, it was used to be on the Add-ins tab, now on 2018, they've moved it over here to the View tab, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up just a little bit, so I'm going to, like, go to Shaded, for example. And I'm gonna change my detail level down to medium, just so you can see a couple of things that, uh, when you do the go live button here, so once you install uh, the Revit Live Editor, it makes an add-in into your Revits, like it did uh, 2018, 17, 16, 15 for me, I think, or at least it went back several, um, several versions back. When I hit go live, and I'll cancel out of this in a second, but, um, I have a section box on. It says, just thought you ought to know, you got a section box on, maybe some of your model's gonna be cut off. Do you wanna fix it? And you could just hit fix if you feel like it, saying your detail level is not really um, set for, um, you know, uh, fine, so you might wanna set that too. So making suggestions to me, you know, um, some of my materials were not found. There's a whole bunch of steel case in here that I don't have the materials for them and it actually shows the details underneath. And my visual style is not set for, um, for realistic, which is actually, it's gonna give brick looking like brick, and it's telling me so, so are you sure this is what you want? Um, the last one here at the bottom, and by the way, I could just say save and go, and away it goes, and it'll, it'll give me that same um, output, but as long as you have even the slightest little bit of a topo surface in there, um, it will give you extend terrain to horizon, and then it, it takes your, um, your uh, topo surface at whatever level you set at and sends it out to the horizon, puts these kind of hills around the outside edge in your model, okay? Um, I would suggest, and let me cancel out of this, I would suggest that you consider this uh, for the material, use site grass. I guess that's maybe kind of obvious, but when you first drop it in, it might be brown, right? material by category. Um, if you do that grass, that's what they're using all around you, and so you can't tell where your stops and their starts, okay? So just uh, food for thought there, okay. All right, so, um, oh yeah, and you might want a floor, too, by the way, because once you start, if you don't have a topo surface and you don't have any floors, <laughs> which is not too common, but I actually did some samples that way, um, the tap to go button, I'm talking about this one down here. Let's see, here's the editor. The tap and go button right here, it doesn't display because gravity turns on and, and it, you know, it'll drop you down onto the ground. So um, part of the reason I think this is so cool, you know, like I'm, I teach classes on um, all, all flavors of Revit, okay, MEP, architecture, structure. I teach a class, uh, 3ds Max, for Revit users, right? Revit users, bring in your model now, let's create animations and such like that. I teach Navisworks, right? So there's a number of what we call hero products from Autodesk for things, but, you know, with, with Revit, um, I can set up a camera view and I can make a still and do a rendering. 
um, because I know Revit and I, um, and I have the learning curve and the license for it, I can walk around and explore that model pretty nicely, right? Section boxes, selection boxes, so on and so forth. Mm, you know, but not so much for the masses, not for my owner, right? I have to give them the stills because they, they're not going to have the learning curve for that. 3ds Max, I can make a, um, an image look really pretty darn realistic looking, but it's a still image. I can create an animation, but it's a set path. Nobody can venture off of it, which may be right sometimes, right? I want, him, I want to take the owner down here to the left and then down this way. I don't want him looking any other place, maybe. Okay, true. Okay, so, so there's an advantage there, but... Um, and Navis works now. That's probably the closest to immersive, if you're familiar with it, to be able to walk around inside your model and such. Come on now. Have you guys ever tried? I don't know if you know Navis works, but have you ever tried the avatar? Right? Come on, really? You know, the construction worker like this, you know? <laughs> right? It's just, um, anyway, this is more like what, you know, I've, I've been kind of grousing about with the whole, are you kidding me thing? So, um, Consider this, right? Okay, so if you don't know Navisworks, check it out. Turn on the avatar. Okay, so a left click, I can um, orbit like so. Okay, um, anywhere, I can roll the wheel back and forward, so easy enough with that, right? I can press on the wheel of the mouse and pan. I can tap on the ground, and it will take me down to the ground immediately, okay? And you already saw that tapping anywhere will get me to walk that direction, okay? Now, um, for example, over here, walk to this location. Now, I'm looking at the trees, and I think I showed you a little bit earlier that they're just blowing a little bit in the breeze, okay? Now, what did I have to do to get that to happen before I published it? Uh, nothing. I didn't have to do nothing, okay? Um, I just took the regular trees from the Autodesk uh, RPC library there, uh, you know, that are from Ac AccuVision. No. Anyway, the, they, they incorporated some, some models in there. Oh, they're going to kill me when they uh, hear this video. Accu, no, sorry. Darn it, down on the tip of my tongue. ArchVision, is that it? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, anyway, there's some of the samples, and they want you to buy more, more people, more um, trees, cars, things like that from them too, right? And um, so, so I didn't have to do anything to get the trees to work. Now, um, they're, they're increasing the library. This is part of the process, and I think they just look to see what the variety is. And uh, like this tree is significantly different uh, than that tree, for example, in the two. I took a couple of fall trees. I should have taken something a little more comfortable, um, colorful. But there was nothing I needed to do there to get that to happen. Um, over here, for example, with the doors, like if I get to this door, oops, that's not a door. Here, I'll, I'll do this. I'll click on the floor, and then it'll go around. Okay, go around to the door. Okay, the doors will open up if it's... In, uh, 2017 or newer doors that you put in, and they're from the Autodesk Imperial Library. Okay, so I don't think they really did anything to the RFAs to get them to do that. I think they're just recognizing that it's one of theirs, and then they substitute during the process uh, the door to swing open during this process. So if you are using your own, like I, I make my own doors and things like that too, we, maybe we all do with Family Editor, if you do that sort of thing, um, it will just, when you get to the door, it just disappears and you walk through. And then if you look behind you as you're walking, it'll reappear, okay? So you can't go too wrong there either. There wasn't anything I had to do there. So let's see, where am I at here? I'm over on this side. Let's, um, the people over here as well. Okay, so uh, let me do a tap to go here once to go over to them. Um, this, is the, this is the regular entourage people. Okay, and if you look, they're just subtly moving around a little bit, you know, just shifting weight. Not enough to distract, like the earlier version of the leaves animating too, it was sort of distracting, and, um, and then in the earlier versions of uh, Autodesk Live, they called it then, you know, it would just be 
a still image like this that was opaque. Um, now what I can do is um, there's a little bit of animation enough that looks a little more real. And here in the, in the editor, I can go to people. Now, they don't have that button. Um, and I can say, when I publish, and I say they, being the viewer, won't have this button up here. I can say, you know what, um, turn animation off when, because it's too distracting. And they won't move around then when you publish it to the viewer. Back on here, we're moving around. I chose this guy because he's particularly moving around. Um, I can say I'd rather have them be this kind of a silhouette and or I'd rather have them be more opaque. And so I, I kind of like the white transparent, but you be the call. Or they're just plain in the way. They were in my model, but I really didn't want them to be seen. Um, I can just turn them off altogether and have their visibility off if you want to when you publish. Okay, now um, I'm gonna shift around to the outside of the building here once. Let me go to, let me go back to this view here once. Okay, now I'm using the points of view off to the right. Now, have you ever been, you know, talking to your owner, you know, or some kind of a stakeholder, and they're going, eh, not really like in the red brick, Kurt, you know, it's a little too maroon, I'm thinking more brown, you know? And you're going, okay, we'll, we'll go with brown brick. And then you're like trying to talk about the exercise room in the community center, and they're going, you know, that brick, you know, like you can't get them off of it, right? So if you want to, when you share it with them, take that off the table, right? Up here in style, now this is another button that only the editor would have. We can say, I don't want the materials as a part of this. I still want the grass to be green, but um, the whole rest of the building, just make it white, okay? Um, or this one's subtly different right here. See, there's green grass right now, and I can say even that is distracting. Um, you know, make that kind of a gray for it. Just take that off the table, okay? So um, that can be helpful to, um, to enable conversations. Once again, with the views here once. Um, over here to the side, um, I can jump from view to view with this. Here I am on the balcony, for example, like that. Um, these pointers that you're seeing out here are my views. Okay, now I can turn those on and off if I decide that I don't want them, you know, just uh, points of view, I don't want to see them, uh, so they're not in the way. But, um, oh, actually, I guess I would do that under settings if I was gonna do that. Um, what these points of view also allow me to do, though, is just simply click on them and I can jump around. They are the camera views and the 3D views that you had within your model when you decided to publish it up into the cloud and get it back down again. Now, um, I can see here, for example, here's 3D, crush somebody or other, whoever was working on this model, that's one of their views in there. I can click on it and rename it to something more meaningful. I can find a spot where I think would be more helpful you know, like I want to have that as a view, so I just say new point of view here, and a new one gets created, and then I can rename that one as well. Here was one that was in the model. I left it in here for us. I'm not quite sure what they were seeing. Maybe it was some kind of a view that they created pretty close to the roof. I don't want that one at all. I just hit the X next to it, and that one's out of there. There we go. And that one's gone here in a second. There we go, and it's gone. Okay, so you can reorder them, simply pick them up and say cover shot up here. And then, you know, make that one be the home view, that sort of thing. All right, so um, I have in this model, um, I have the floors that are coming out of the structural model. So if you look back at the Revit model, and I go to manage the views here, I manage, and go manage links. Um, the links that are in the model um, merge automatically. Now, if uh, in Revit we insert origin to origin or however you're doing it, shared coordinates, that sort of thing. Navisworks, we're doing the same sort of thing, aggregating the models together. Here, as long as you have them loaded, like I went ahead and took um, this one right here and unloaded it, and the fabrication one and unloaded it, 
and then I published, and then those will get left behind. Um, but you don't have to publish several of them and merge them together. That just does it automatically there for you as well. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so the question is, does it do anything with point clouds or any other kind of reality capture? Not yet. No, not yet. But um, you can imagine that, um, that that would be one that they might want to include at some point. As a matter of fact, on the wish list item, uh, here, let's go to this. Um, if I come here to, well, here, I'll, I'll show you this one in the, let's do this. I think I got here, you know, actually, this one over here has a lot of, let me go to the viewer. They included the whole MEP in here once. So here's the same community center, but with a little different uh, spin on the materials. And let me go around to the other side of the building here. And let me show you sun here once. Um, if you go to sun, um, it's capturing our location. Now what I'm talking about there, you probably know this back in Revit land. Um, if you go to the uh, sun settings, um, this is a still based in, I guess, in Los Angeles, California, on this day at this time of day, okay? So it's picking up on that location, and back here in the viewer then, if I change the time of day, okay, right? And when, you, when you get to night or dawn, uh, the lights will turn out like that. Let me come down to the ground here once and look up. Um, an L will turn out the lights, and an L will turn it back on. Now, to David's comment, um, I think for a wish list item, USB connection to clapper. I was kind of hoping they'd include that at some point. Come on, that'd be cool. Anyway, if they're watching this video, that's what I'm after, right? The clapper, okay. Anyway, the uh, sun position is nice too if you're doing sun studies and or lighting studies on this. Now, um, in the earlier versions, they were trying to tweak the lights to get it just so, okay? And um, they were having a hard time with it. In version 1.0 or something like that, all the lights were overdriven, like the whole model was like uber bright. And then they started working on spotlights first and they got spotlights working closer to what reality is. Now, if you're really looking for reality, um, I suggest um, that you use the um, ray, trace, ray tracer engine in Revit for this because with uh, 2017 and 2018 anyway, the ray tracer engine is the only engine in there now and it gets uh, way more physical ac uh, light, uh, light and materials for that. Um, if, if you run across anything like, you know, maybe in some, maybe in some uh, really enclosed space there's too many lights and you're trying to tone it down some, uh, what I had to do with some of the earlier versions was this. Um, I went to uh, edit light on a type, edit type on a light. And then right here the light loss factor set to one. Um, I would uh, dim it here to whatever my heart desire. You know, like if I'm really trying to make, right around the uh, lobby area, I'm trying to make uh, the, the owner look at that and really come up with the decision around that and it's not working out the way that I really want it to be with, uh, I haven't squared away the bulbs, for example. Um, you can adjust it here and then when you push it up and back down, that's the light loss factor that you get. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, how intelligent does it have to be um, and what does it do uh, for the light fixtures and, and what does it do with missing data, so. Yeah, I, um, um, and, and the answer, would, would they not turn them on? Uh, bu, 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 I'm trying to think if I've had any lights that weren't turned on. Um, no, I, I think it, I think it, uh, 
I don't know how much, I guess I don't know how much guessing it does if it, like they all seem to turn on and I've never found anything that is, is missing there yet. Um, now if I was a lighting, if I was a lighting designer, nah, I don't think I'd be taking this too far, you know, with that, because I don't think they're trying to hit on that quite yet, but you can tell where they're going with this, right? And, and for that matter, you know, Revit too, with um, the fact that it has these kind of built-in parameters with um, initial color, initial intensity, things like that, you know, and hopefully uh, IES files that, you know, are appropriate to what the real fixture would do. Uh, let's see, any others? The, um, the, the present button that you're seeing at the top, uh, right here it says home on it. Um, right here it says present. If you're working with that, and here let me, uh, on points of view here, and then hit present here once. Uh, escape will get you back out of it, but it decreases the amount of uh, choices just to along the sides just to be able to uh, get a little more real estate for you. And then if you hit the escape button, it does a little bit more of a rebuild to come back to it again. Now, um, I said a little bit earlier about um, BIM information, right? So if I zoom in a little bit here and hit the info button down here at the bottom, get the info button going here. There we go. Um, a dialog pops up here. And if I click any on any object, so this is 10 inch cast in place concrete wall, um, base attached. You know, this is the properties that are coming out of normally we would see in our property palette. Thermal mass, roughness, absorbance, assembly code, cost. Let me kick on one of these uh, windows, for example. A 10 by 10. The volume, the area. So on and so forth. Okay, so this is not just pretty picture and, and uh, walking around. This is us being able to explore the model uh, like we would with the Revit parameter and parameter values as well, okay? The, um, the settings uh, down here at the bottom, uh, they'll bring up things like uh, travel speed, field of view, setting the height. When you hit the ground, how high would you like to be off the ground? Um, one that I might point out to you right here on graphics, if you select on that, you get two choices performance or appearance. So you'll see a subtle, like maybe look up in this area here when I hit appearance. There's a little bit more of a uh, reflectance off of the brick and you're seeing in the more uh, glossy aluminum surface there that the little bit of brick surface shows up here. And if I go back to performance, it looks a little more flat when it does that. Um, and the trees start to animate again. When I go to appearance, the trees, it's, it's spending way more processing to try and get all the reflectance and materials right, um, but then the trees stop to uh, animate as far as the blowing of the leaves. Not a big deal, right? But um, you wanna balance that. Um, when I first loaded this up, the newer version here, which will probably be the one you get when you go back to the office, both for the viewer and for the editor, it kept flashing, like flash, flash, flash. I saw it getting kind of you know, dark around the edges and then back again. And what it was doing was, underneath settings, when you first install it, it goes back and forth and back and forth till you make a decision. It's trying to show you, here's two different ones. I didn't know that, you know? So it probably set it somewhere because this big screen comes up to kind of show me what's going on. But I'm a man, and so I don't read anything, right? I don't ask for directions. Instead, I drive around usually faster and faster uh, when I'm lost, okay? But um, anyway, go down there and set that to, you know, one of them that makes sense for you. All right, so um, I, I wanted to um, talk just up here in just a second. I'll get out of that. I wanted to talk just a little bit more about um, the virtual reality button down in the bottom, okay? So, um, so there's three different ways that you can export this out, you know, uh, well, at least for three different uses. One is for the desktop, 
And then also for the iPad, it's the same format, I believe. Um, but then there's VR as well. And, um, you know, here's, like, if you ask for the requirements in the Knowledge Network online, um, it'll give you this. I thought it was kind of interesting that, you know, like they usually do have, here's the headset, you know, here's the RAM needed, that kind of thing. But, oh, by the way, this one has physical space, right? And um, I don't know if you've um, uh, ever, like, on YouTube, went to look at uh, maybe um, virtual reality fails, actually, or virtual reality fails compilation. <laughs> They'll have like, like this, you know, this is uh, some girl running across the room, uh, crashing in the walls and stuff like that. So actually Autodesk included in their uh, physical space as well. So it's more like this kind of a thing, right? So um, don't run around, don't get too absorbed in it if you're in there. Uh, the HTC Vive um, with the Vive controller um, is uh, one of them that they recommend. And then uh, there's the Oculus Riff and with their uh, Oculus Touch controllers. I just wanted to show you 60 seconds of a video from Autodesk that, um, that I think, uh, if I just go to 40 seconds in here, a second. This, this would give you a better sense laser. for a method that uh, minimizes the looks discomfort like from, sometimes associated from their point with of view, virtual reality experiences. Right? So somebody not running around the room into Activates walls or whatever is just standing the there right and doing this. The controller. But uh, there's what he's seeing anyway aim when he laser presses and the button. Simply let go of the trigger he'll jump to it instead of running to, to it, right? Like the girl in the, the video controller vibrates there. slightly whenever pointed right? at a valid teleport location. If he gets to a place where it's not going to let him run to the side of the wall or whatever, the little target disappears. You can also use right? the laser to select a view. And uh, if you see one of the viewpoints, you know, like one of those, you just can the jump up to it. The minimap the scene in uh, miniature, balloon up letting above, you easily right? navigate around your and model. So um, there's also a thing Activate called the, the minimap by pressing here. the left thumb pad on the Vive controller. They can bring up a minimap. Or by pressing the X button and then say, on the left um, touch actually, controller. I want to go over to this While side in minimap mode, right? you can use the laser to teleport to any location in your scene. And you can so adjust anyway, the minimap by that pressing piece. and holding on the grip button. Um, with regard to uh, live, though, everything I've been showing you here so far has been um, out of the box. I didn't have to. I didn't have to install the cloud service, so you don't have to because it's in the cloud. Um, I don't have to deal with updates and things like that there. I had the easy thing to install that communicated with it and got it, and then they did the processing and I got it back fast. Okay, now, once you've taken the, the Revit model, pushed it up into the cloud with the editor, and it comes back in the editor's format, you can take it into Stingray, which is the gaming engine from um, Autodesk, um, for, that they built for the design, building design industry. And then you can do a few more things with it. Now they keep adding things out of the box. You know, for example, doors opening, that wasn't in the very first release, right? Um, the trees animating, actually, that was in the first release. Um, the people animating, that just now showed up, that kind of thing. Um, but once you get into the gaming engine, I thought I'd show you just a little bit of um, what that might look like, let's see, let's go to, oops, I went past it. There's the editor, there's the viewer. Here, let me close this one once. And let me go to this one. Here's a few of the, these are a few of the sam samples that are up on the site. If you um, download the viewer, then you can just go ahead and try out some of these yourself too. Um, I went and pushed up all my models, everything I had some, one Saturday afternoon, like structural, my MEP ones. I turned all of my building to glass first before I pushed it up. By the way, if um, there's MEP type people in here, um, probably the best way to do that is to uh, go into, make a copy of your RVT, go into phases, and change the material on new construction and existing for their model to be glass. And then if you put that way, the override for, I don't know if you guys are familiar with phases, but some people maybe would, um, even things that are RFA in nature, ceilings, floors, everything, the whole thing turns to glass, except for your stuff. Okay, and then you can see right through the ceilings and see all the ductwork and all. Food for thought, it's, part, it's something I teach in a different class. Um, anyway, what I wanted to show you here was, 
Um, this one's been taken into Stingray. And you see the water? Okay, I, that was not out of the box, but maybe it'll just show up here at some point. Um, here, uh, for example, with the people, I mean, I get too close to them, but walk around over to the people. I kind of like the silhouette people better. You know, this kind of is taking over, but, um, and, and every once in a while, you know, I don't know whether my timing happens to be good, but every once in a while, some, some birds fly out of these trees, for example, and go overhead, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I can wait around for them. Here, let me go to, and one other thing that they did here, let me go up to, say, the den. Oops, there goes the birds. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Quick, look out the window. <laughs> you saw them. <laughs> um, anyway, what I wanted to show you here was... Uh, it's too late. Um, let me go up to the den here again. Where am I at here? Oh, here we go. Um, you know, like this, for example, you know, this is an animation sort of a thing. So it's kind of, they use a little bit of Stingray, a little bit of 3DS Max to kind of get this thing done as well. So um, I think I had maybe one more slide here yet. And that was, um, you know, the 3DS Max part also for um, getting involved in uh, getting this done and getting it done right, too. Um, I guess in closing for me, other than um, I could take a few questions, I know we've been kind of talking as we went here a little bit. Maybe it's not rocket science anyway. Um, that's part of my point. Um, that's part of my point is this is easy, right? It, it, the install's easy. You just saw everything that I can do in this, and the learning curve is nothing. I mean, I just push the mouse around and roll the wheel back and forth, and I'm doing it, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, would it be more advantageous to take the model into 3ds Max and develop it there and then take it into live? Uh, you know, the, the, the kicker, though, is it's taken RVT, and I can link the Revit model into 3ds Max, but then the, the materials that I develop and apply and lighting and entourage and such like that in 3ds live in 3ds. And when I say, do I want to refresh the RVT as a link back into the 3DS model, it says, um, one of the toggles is, would you like to retain the changes you've made in 3DS Max? So you can tell they're going this direction with it. Some of the stuff takes them to where perhaps at some point, they won't call it Revit Live anymore. It'll be, well, Revit and 3DS Max Live or something like that to push it up. Um, with the render in the cloud, for example, we have render in the cloud. I don't know if you guys have tried it. Um, pretty cool with what you can do with it, not just stills, but panorama, panorama and lighting studies, things like that. Um, it's not in 3ds Max, at least as far as I know, um, because they'll, they'll bring, you know, Autodesk wants to make sure that this is squared away before they uh, bring the system to its knees with a whole bunch of graphic designers trying to hit the cloud. I think that's part of it, probably. So, uh, yes. Uh, and can we go live into C4R? Um, if you install, well, of course, now it's always installed with the newer one, but um, if you have collaboration for Revit, um, you'll ha still have, like I do, you'll still have the go live button, so you can take your model from there up into the cloud and then back down probably to your C drive or your desktop and take it on from there. So even if the project is in collaboration for Revit, uh, you should be able to do this. I actually have not, but... Um, I, I don't see why not, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so, so the thought process there, perhaps at some point Autodesk will have it more live updating instead of because we are doing a snapshot in time. You know, it's like once I push it up in the cloud and then another designer comes in and moves a wall and changes it from brick to 
concrete. Um, I don't see that in my live model. But I, you know, I already know that Autodesk, for example, with render in the cloud, um, they're doing uh, like a, a still rendering for you up there. But at some point, they, they may decide to turn on uh, where the model keeps updating, like prefetching and, and um, pre um, rendering for you, just in case you want to go look and see what the new rendering looks like from the same camera position. They haven't done that yet, but at some point. Am I doing okay on time? Yeah. Okay, I, I, there's another question here, too. Ah, oh, uh, okay, okay, so, um, okay, so the question revolves around, um, even though it is a snapshot in time, like we were talking about earlier, you've made editing changes to the file and s created some new points of view and changed the style and, and such like that. Does it recognize that? And I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Um, what I had been doing was renaming my Revit file, two, three, four, so that each time I got it, I'd have a different one in time. Um, back, uh, back with version one, uh, it would just automatically overwrite it and not ask me. You know, maybe I didn't like the new one, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. Um, here, uh, now at least, it gives you three different choices, and there's, um, there was um, create a new one with a slightly different name, or uh, overwrite. So it's overwriting the uh, file underneath the hood, but I think it's gonna retain the viewpoints that you created in there, even though the des design is changing. Yeah, I mean, it's all so fast that it didn't seem like it would take too terrible long to get it, so that's why I haven't ex exercised that yet. Okay, yes, sir. Um, as near as I can tell, okay, so the, the, the question is, does it use cloud credits for that? And um, uh, as near as I can tell, it is not using any cloud credits for that. So don't hold me to that, but um, I'm, I'm, fair, I'm fairly sure. Because like, when, when I do a render, okay, all right. So somebody just said not yet, but okay. <laughs> I can't speak to that. And by the way, um, this is, uh, if this is on YouTube, this is, uh, September 2017, so <laughs> um, keep that in mind. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, that's, that's very cool, thank you.